this video relates to the AQA English Language Paper 2 exam with a focus on question 2. Now if you haven't done so already, you're going to need to download yourself the source material that goes with this question and you can access that via the AQA website. You can either find that via Google or you can more simply just type this link into your browser and it should take you straight through to the assessment resources page. When you're on this page, you need to click on the Paper 2 Specimen Insert link and that should automatically download for you. So once you have found those sources, pause this video and give Source A and Source B a really thorough read. So question 2 carries 8 marks and therefore we would recommend you would spend about 10 minutes on this question. Question 2 is going to ask you to summarise the similarities and or differences between source A and source B. So essentially what they're testing here is your um, ability to synthesise, so the synthesis skill. And all that means is can you select information from two different texts and, and draw them together to be able to comment on them um, and, and draw parallels between the ideas that have been put forward in those texts. So you will always be asked to synthesise based on a certain topic and the exam board will choose that topic based on the sources that you've got in front of you. Some examples of the topics that we've seen so far in the specimen paper concern place, activities, attitudes, um, people and even um, effects of the weather. So you can see just from that, it's actually a really diverse range of topics that we've seen so far. So essentially, the topic that you get asked for um, in question two could be anything. But what, what will always be a sure thing is that it will have um, grown out of the content of the sources. So it will always be a topic that, that links source A and source B together. So in order to analyse the topic properly and to be able to summarise it, you are inevitably going to need to infer and make inferences. And all that means is to draw opinions from the implicit information. So let's just have a little reminder again of what explicit and implicit information is. I know we've been over this before, but it's an integral part of question two, and in fact a crucial part of the paper in general. So. To decide um, whether, explicit, whether information is explicit or, or implicit, you um, would need to, to know a bit of background on them. So explicit information is stated clearly, leaving absolutely no room for doubt or confusion. So that's our information which is very much on the surface. It's easy to find, it's easy to identify um, and um, easy to trust because it's there right, right on the surface. We don't have to really delve for it. On the other hand, our implicit information is the information that's sort of buried beneath the surface. So it's suggested to us, though not directly expressed. And what you're going to need to do with this question in order to make inferences is to actually really get to grips with the implicit information and decide, um, form your own opinion really, on the text that you've been given. And the only way you're going to be able to really um, get an informed response to the text is is by really uncovering and reading between the lines. So when it comes to explicit and implicit information, if you want to score well in this question, you kind of need to leave the explicit ideas alone. We're not really going for those instead, because they're, they're, they're a bit limited, they're a bit on the surface, it's kind of, it would result in a, a simple kind of limited answer. What we want to be going for is the more implicit information. So if you can, can ex extract the implicit ideas from the text, the things that are being suggested to you, and use that to help you summarise, then you're going to have a much higher quality answer. So let's break down this idea then of explicit details versus implicit details. So I've just taken this concept of a really basic idea of a comparison between slides. So let's just imagine that you were asked to compare the differences between these two slides. Um, slide A, you can see, is a rather tall water slide. Slide B, a children's um, slide for the garden. Just to put into context for you what explicit means, is it, these are just some examples of the explicit differences that you could have between these two pictures. For instance, you could say, 
slide A is taller than slide B. You could say that slide B is pink and A is white. You could say that slide A is steeper um, than slide B. But all of those details are pretty on the surface. They're only going to give us a kind of simple and limited answer because we're not really having to make any inferences from that information. We're not really having to read between the lines. So let's have a look at how we could delve a bit deeper then into these more implicit details. So for instance, instead of going for the surface, um, the surface observations like the colours and the height, etc., implicit details could be something like slide A requires more courage to ride than slide B. Slide A would provide more of a thrill than slide B. And then slide B would perhaps require less safety measures than slide A. So here, with the idea of courage and thrill and safety measures, those are all ideas which weren't, less, they weren't on the surface of those pictures. We've had to kind of use our inference to be able to, um, to, to take those suggestions on board and, and figure out some different opinions about the material. So, from the difference, well, from gathering that implicit information, what you can then do with that implicit information is begin to put that into categories. So, for instance, based on this implicit information that we came up with, you could talk about the categories of courage, thrill and safety measures. Before we take this idea of categories any further, let's have a look at um, what this question entails and we'll pick this thread up in just a second. So, before you answer the question, as always, you need to focus on what it's actually asking you. So, you need to refer to source A and source B for this question. Use details from both sources. Write a summary of the differences between Eddie and Henry. Now, hopefully you did pause the video before, and therefore you will know who Eddie and Henry are from the sources. But if you skip that bit, you definitely need to pause the video now and, and read the sources so that you're, you're on board with what's happening here. So, if you have already read it, um, pause the video and decide which are the key bits of this question. And hopefully we'll have come up with some similar ideas. So, it's really important to note that this question requires you to look at both of the sources. So, don't exclude one like you did with, with question one, because you need to draw on both to, in order to get a successful answer. Also, um, this question is telling you to only focus on the differences. Now that could just as easily be similarities or in some cases they've even been known to um, devise a question too that says similarities and differences. So it's really important that you thoroughly read the question to make sure exactly what it is you're being asked to do. You're being asked to state the things that are similar or the things that are different. And then finally, perhaps the most important bit of this question is the idea of Eddie and Henry, because this is your question topic. So you know, you know that you are going to have to write a summary on the differences between these two boys. Okay, so let's come back to this idea that we were just talking about with, with the pictures of the slides. So we've got the idea of Eddie in one source and Henry in the other source. And we know that we have to talk, we have to summarise the differences between these two boys. And as we said before, we don't want to go for the explicit details, such as um, one, one was alive in the 1800s and the other one is alive in the 21st century. We don't want to go for those kind of surface level points. Instead, we want to go for um, some more of the implicit differences. So, based on the information that you have within your source, pause this video now and just see whether you can come up with um, a list of implicit details that we understand about Eddie, and then a list of implicit details that we find out about Henry, and just make a note of them. So, pause the video now and have a go for yourselves at that bit. So, Sorry, I've gone to the wrong section here. There we go. So, some different implicit ideas that you may have come up with for, um, well, relating to Eddie. He seems to be quite playful and quite cheeky with his dad. He seems to have a good sense of humour, possibly a little bit rebellious. Um, he seems to be quite intelligent. You could say that he's lacking respect for his father as he doesn't look up from his computer when his dad comes into his bedroom. 
you could have said that he's exposed to a, minim um, a minimally strict parenting style. So in other words, his dad doesn't seem to be, you know, that, that strict with him really. You might have picked up on the fact that he has got a technological lifestyle because he's playing his games and he's on his computer. And then finally, you might have implicitly picked up on the fact that he seems to enjoy school and has, um, sorry, that he seems to enjoy other outlets than, than just school. He seems to have other things going on in his life. Okay, some implicit differences then for source B to do with Henry. He seems to be very respectful of his father. Perhaps you could um, infer that there's a stricter parenting style here. He seems to go to um, a very strict school, which has a quite um, a, a, a formal and strict environment. Um, you could say that he's less rela relaxed um, and less concerned with the consequences of um, actions. Um, you could say that um, he has few outlets, but but school and church, so he tends to be more confined, not as free as Eddie, perhaps. Um, he definitely has strong emotional ties with home and um, seems to be struggling with his spelling, so maybe you could infer that he's less focused or, or less intelligent. So when it came to the exam, you wouldn't necessarily have to jot all these points down. I mean, you could if it was going to help you. Um, but this stage would perhaps be more of a um, more of a mental process rather than um, sort of wasting time writing these things out. But it's important to establish these implicit pointers because you need to um, you need to use this now to begin to create some categories. So let's just scroll back down to the next page. So this links to um, where we left off before, when we did our work on the slides and we came up with three kind of implicit categories that linked the two slides together, you can do exactly the same with the sources that you, um, that you are confronted with in the exam. So now that we've compiled some information, some implicit information on Henry and also on Eddie as well, you can start to look at this information and think, right, okay, what kind of, what overall category then, what overarching category could I pick that would link, um, that would link the two sources, sources together in order for me to be able to explore the differences between the two boys? So with this information, try to pause the video now and consider some, some linking categories that would that you could use to answer this question and to kind of um, be be the root of some of your points. So pause the video, see what you come up with, and we'll compare it in a second. Okay, so you may then have come up with some of these possible categories just because. Um, I've got a list of six here does not mean that, that it's an exhaustive list. Um, you, you may well have come up with um, another idea which is perfectly acceptable but it just doesn't happen to be on this, on this list. So based from that implicit information, you could categorise that down, you could condense it down into, into possible topics of um, level of respect towards parents because that's, that category kind of links the two together. They both show um, a, a certain level of respect to their parents and it's it's a different level okay lifestyle could be another category because they both have um, certain lifestyles but they're both very different Eddie's is very different um, has sorry has a very different lifestyle to Henry the idea of freedom again that's a topic that links both Henry and Eddie because they both experience different levels of it closeness of relationship with a parent we definitely get the sense that, um, well, we both know that they have a relationship with their parent in these sources, but they definitely seem to have a different level of closeness. Enjoyment of school is another um, overarching category that you might have identified. And then adherence to the rules, so basically how much do they follow the rules. So hopefully you, you can see through those examples what we're trying to get at with this idea of categories. It's basically a topic which links both of your sources together um, that will allow you to explore um, the differences between the two sources and whatever, whatever topic it is that you're being asked to talk about. Okay, so let's apply this then. Let's apply this category idea to the sources because the category, once you've got that, that's going to be your key to kind of making the transition from this sort of planning stage that we've done so far to actually writing an answer. 
The diagram you see on the screen now is almost like a diagram of what your paragraph will look like and the process that you're going to go through in order to write really, really successful summary paragraphs. You want to take a category and you want that to be the root, if you like, of your paragraph. You're then going to bring, under, under, this, under this category, you're then going to bring in source A. So you're going to talk about how Eddie fits into that category. You're then going to use a discourse marker to be able to, to allow you to sort of move across now to talk about source B. And then you're going to talk about how Henry fits into that category. So let's have a look at this diagram with an actual category in its place. So I've gone for respect for parents as a general category. Now respect for parents, like we said before, is something that links both of the sources together because they both have parental relationships, but they both have different levels of respect for their parents. So firstly, we are going to talk about source A. And we're going to say that actually Eddie perhaps um, has a kind of a lack of respect for his parent. The discourse marker that I've chosen to allow me to move on to talk about source B and to establish the fact that there's a difference here is whereas. So source A shows a lack of respect for the parent, whereas source B um, seems to be very overly, uh, almost overly respectful of the father. Now that's the paragraph in its most basic form, this idea of start with a category, talk about how source A fits into that category, then contrast it or liken it depending on whether you're, asked to be, whether you're being asked to focus on similarities or differences to source B and say how that fits into the category. So that's your basic overview of what your paragraph is going to look like, but you do need some extra things in there as well. And those extra things are a topic sentence and that topic sentence is going to introduce the category so it's going to set up what the rest of your paragraph is actually going to be about. You're then going to talk about source A and how that fits into the category. You are then going to need to give some evidence and this is crucial. You cannot write your question to um, answer without the use of quotes. It's absolutely imperative that you have them in there. So you're going to give evidence to show how source A fits into the category. You're then going to use that evidence to make an inference um, about Eddie. So you're going to um, offer some sort of opinion based on the implicit information that you find about him. You're then going to use a discourse marker to navigate you towards source B. And now it's source B's turn. You're going to repeat, basically repeat that process, uh, but this time with source B. So comment on the way that Henry fits into that category, give some evidence, and then make an inference about what this suggests about the boy. So let's have a look then what that would like that what that would look like if um, you combine that all together in full paragraph form. So the boys also differ in terms of the respect they show towards their fathers. In source A, Eddie appears to be playful and cheeky with his father, with the way he remorselessly takes the Mickey. It could be said that this cheekiness shows a lack of respect for his father, as when he walks into the room, he doesn't look up from his computer screen. On the other hand, Henry appears to be overly respectful towards his father. This can be inferred from the way he addresses his father in a very formal way, my dear father. This could suggest that Henry is reverent around his father and feels the need to stay polite and traditional at all times. So that paragraph has got each of the categories that we would hope um, for you to put in your own, um, in your own paragraphs. So, have a look at the colour coding in the, um, in the paragraph here so that you can see what each, of these, um, what each of these categories would look like in the actual flesh of the paragraph. So pause the video if you need to, um, spend a bit longer on this um, and, and take a closer look. Okay, so let's have a reminder of this process then. The very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to underline the key terms in the question. Secondly, you are going to focus on the implicit information and you're going to try to establish from that implicit information two to three categories to link the similarities, all the differences between the texts, between the sources. 
Finally, you're going to use those categories to develop paragraphs that contain topic sentences, comments on the sources, evidence, discourse markers and inferences. And in an ideal world, and you have only got 10 minutes on this question, and inevitably there will be a small amount of planning involved, um, in an ideal world it would be great if you could write three paragraphs, but in my opinion two is probably more achievable. So some things to watch out for in this question. Try to avoid explicit comments. They will only make your answer um, simple and limited and that's really going to restrict the marks that you are able to achieve. So really do try to avoid the explicit comments and try to think beneath the surface and read between the lines of a source to, to figure out what's implicitly going on underneath. And then finally, don't forget to support your inferences with evidence. You absolutely must back up your ideas in this question with some quotations. And that is question two. It's quite a long process, um, so maybe revisit this video a couple of times just to go over all the components that are going um, to help to build up to a really successful answer.